Welcome to the Copper King Mine and Railroad. Today we're going to take a look at some great panoramic views of Bingham Canyon. Now what's interesting, this is all buried now under tons and tons of waste material. So stay tuned. Now I've made up some books of these panoramic views and you can see some of them in these books right here. So this is what we're going to show you today. We're going to talk about some of these pictures. And like I said, it's all buried under tons and tons of material now. So this will be an interesting video today. The Buried Canyon. I'm going to try something different today. I will show you a picture and then point out where it was at in the canyon. Why I'm doing this is to share with you these wonderful panoramic views of the canyon. Now these places I'm going to show you are now buried underneath tons and tons of waste material and will never be seen again. Most, if not all, the pictures were taken with a purpose. Here are some reasons the mine management would take a picture. Property assessment, a visual view of the claims or property. I'm showing these pictures, huh? Talk a little slow here. Looking for sites to place overburden or waste material. Now this picture is up in Highland Boy, and then the same picture, it's colored in where they're going to put the waste material or the waste rock. Planning a new route for the railroad, including tunnels and bridge building. Now this blue line shows both bridge and tunnel on this mountainside. And then this other picture shows this extra long tunnel it was planning on building. I don't know if they ever did complete this or not. In this picture, they're planning on building a tunnel. And <laughs> here's a close-up because you can't see this very well. There's a close-up of the guys standing out there in these black coats and they're marking off where this tunnel portal was going to be. This picture was taken in 1931 and they're planning to build this cross canyon connection. And these other pictures were taken 10 years later in 1941 and now they're really doing some serious planning of this cross canyon connection. They will build these two tunnels, one for automobiles and one for trains, and they'll fill it in. And this will eventually meet up with the B&G railroad line. Another reason to take a photo was to show the finished project. And here's a picture. They're starting to build the dry fork shops. And then here's the picture of it when it was finished in 1947. And they took pictures for the compare mine development over the period of years. This picture was taken in 1930. Then a picture taken 12 years later in about the same spot. You can see how the mine has developed over the years. Here's a little map of the canyon, but we're going to use this map. This was a 1960 geological map of Bingham Canyon. It has horizontal and vertical grid lines that run east, west, and north and south. This really shows you how the canyon turned and curved as it went up. First entering Copperton at the mouth of the canyon, you're heading about due west. By the time you reach the little town of Bingham, it's running north and south. So we'll make a note of that. This first picture is looking northeast. You can see the little town of Copperton on the bluff. Then we'll just show you Copperton. Here's a picture of Copperton. Now this one's looking northwest. You can see the B on the mountainside. Then we'll show you some little houses here in Copperton that was taken in 1941. And then this picture was taken in 1951, and you can see it's looking south. So this picture is looking up the canyon southwest. The year on this is really important, 1947. This is because this is when they're building the new Copperton low line to the mills. This photo shows them building the route from the mine to get to the new Copperton yard to access that new Copperton low line. Now we're going to look down the canyon, and this is taken the same day, April 25th, 1947, and they're showing that construction of that line. 
Then up the canyon a bit, this was taken May 12, 1931, just west of Dry Fork Canyon. Now in both of these pictures, if you follow the canyon down, you can see that long, long building of the precipitation plant. Now we had a video on that, the pea plant. And then another note is high on the south side of the canyon, you can see the old grade of that low grade line or the high line of the Denver Rio Grande. And that was built in 1906. So now let's take a look at that Dry Fork Canyon. And remember, it was the home of that large viaduct or bridge on the Bingham and Garfield Railroad line. That red arrow shows you which way the camera's pointing looking up Dry Fork Canyon. Then up the canyon a bit and a little high on the mountain, you can see to the right is that Dry Fork Bridge, but then to the left, the bottom corner, you can see the slag dump of the old Yampa smelter. This picture was taken because this is where the new CC line is going to come through, but it won't come here till 10 years later, 1941. That Dry Fork area in Dry Fork Canyon is where they'll build the new shops or the Dry Fork shops. Now look at the canyon in this picture. I like this picture. Bottom center is the Cross Canyon Connection or CC line and they're just working on that. And then left is the new shops. And then down further is the pea plant and then Copperton in the distance. This vantage point, you can see how the canyon is curving as it goes up. It's 1956 photo shows the rail line coming down to Copperton Yard. Now back to 1931, you can see where they're going to put this cross canyon connection. You can see that old Yampa smelter slag dump and there's actually a smokestack still there you can see right there in the picture. Then we turn around and look up the canyon and that Yampa smelter slag dump is on the right. <laughs> and then note the billboards right there in front of them. It's a neat little picture of a train going up there. Then 10 years later, they really start planning this. You can see them laying out where this line's going to come across here and then tunnels are going to build. And then they're going to fill in on the both sides of that tunnel and then make a road over to meet up with the Bingham and Garfield line. Here's a picture of the construction of those tunnels. Note that steam engine running up to Frogtown right there. That woody at the, in the bottom of the picture, that's pretty cool. In this July 15th, 1942 picture, at the bottom right, you can see that Cross Canyon connection now, and they filled it in. Then this October 2nd picture, you can see the trackings laying rail across that Cross Canyon connection. Then another view the same day, you see that track gang right there. Now this view is looking up the canyon. You can just see that little town of Frogtown. This next picture I just really love. This is looking down the canyon and you can see the old Bingham Garfield Railroad on top left. And then just below that is the new Cross Canyon connection. There's trains running on that now. And that's below that old B&G line. Across the canyon, you can see those switchbacks coming down that mountainside to meet up with that new route, that new CC line. Up from those new tunnels on that Cross Canyon connection is the community of Frogtown. And then here's a close up of those houses in Frogtown. Now here's a red dot right there and that's the Denver and Rio Grande Depot in Frogtown. And here's an earlier picture of that depot in 1931. Then 20 years later, here's a picture of it in 1951 and a close-up of that uh, Denver Rio Grande Depot. Then up the canyon a little more, we come to the building of the 6040 tunnel portal. And the year is 1944. Now note the top right. This is the Utah Power Light substation that's on the hill above that uh, exit portal of that 6040 tunnel. The map shows you where that tunnel came through at. Then the next picture shows you that Utah Power Light substation it's to the right there. Now we're looking up the canyon and I'll put a red dot where that substation is, that Utah Power and Light substation. But in this photo, you can see that Markham Bridge right there almost in the center of the picture. 
Now we'll come up even further in the canyon and a better view of that Markham Bridge is closer now. That was a magnificent sight to see that Markham Bridge. If you look down to the canyon floor, you can start to see the little town of Bingham. And finally up to the town of Bingham and the mines in the background, I'll put a little close up to this little town you can see down there. Then I'll show you the map and how this town is going about north and south. Then the last picture is at the confluence. This is where the canyon divided, right up to Carfork Canyon in the Highland Boy area, and then left to Upper Bingham or Copperfield area. And the mine in the background, what a sight this was to see. The people living right here next to the mine in Bingham Canyon. But as I said, the canyon is all filled in. All these spots I have shown you out of these big panoramic views is all gone, buried under thousands of tons of material. And this is all that's left of Bingham Canyon.